Alabama looks like you can once again have one of the top recruiting classes in the country. Heading down the home stretch, the Tide, a finalist for several of the top prospects around the nation. The problem is that in all of those cases, the players are from out of state, and Bama's top competition is from the home state school. Let's uh, quickly run down the guys on the list, Rodney, that Alabama would uh, like to uh, get uh, a name on the dotted line come signing day, of course. J.B. on Clowney, uh, number one prospect in the country, defensive alignment out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Yep, up there they just call him J.D. Gary, and you know I still think he ends up at South Carolina. There was a time when it looked like Alabama was in really good shape with Jadeveon, but I think he goes to South Carolina. Well, prospect that the tide has made up ground on, not a loss yep. on Clowney, but they've made up ground on Tim Jernigan. Yeah, you know, he came here last spring for the junior day and had a great time. I mean, it actually blew him away, and I think uh, Alabama, LSU, and Florida State are his top three. Uh, it'll be one of those three. I know LSU people have been extremely confident. Alabama has a chance. We'll see what happens. You know, Valdosta, Georgia has produced some great, great college football players from both Lowndes County and Valdosta mm -hmm. High. Alabama, though, has never done that great uh, getting players out of Valdosta. Could that change with Malcolm Mitchell? Very possibly could. I know last summer Malcolm was very close to committing to Alabama. He held off to Alabama, Florida, and Georgia. He told us a couple of weeks ago that his mother would have the final say-so in his decision. And again, that was before the coaching change. I mean, we haven't really talked to him since Will Muschamp's taken over, but those were his three at that point. And I think Alabama's, you know, in pretty good shape. Well, Nick Snoop Brassel remains committed to Mississippi State, but Alabama remains committed to recruiting him. Hey, Snoop Brazel, I'm telling you, he's, he's probably the most uh, electrifying player left on Alabama's board. Probably the overall the most electrifying player at Alabama's recruiting. Snoop Brazel from Batesville, Mississippi, South Panola High School, and could play those two positions as you see there. I think Alabama's recruiting him as a wide receiver. Uh, you know, Gary's soft commitment to Mississippi State. He really likes Alabama a lot, though. It's just getting him out of that state. Watch for Ole Miss in the end, though, because they're 25 minutes from campus. There's a lot of push at that school, South Panola, to send players to Ole Miss. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But Alabama is in pretty good shape right now. Well, Bama offense has always been about running backs, and one of the best in the South is Isaiah Cole from Columbus, Georgia. Alabama long thought to be uh, one of the leaders, and it looks like this is going to come down to the tide in the Bulldogs. Yeah, Georgia, and, I, you know, I caught, kind of caught some grief over the past week, Gary, from my comments last week about I thought Cole was headed to Georgia. And, again, you know, I, it's Alabama and Georgia. That's really all you can say. You talk to some people over in Georgia, they say he's locked up for the Bulldogs. That's been, he's a lifelong dream to play for Georgia. But, you know, through the process of being recruited, he fell in love with Alabama. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, it could go either way. Well, older brother Ari's at Alabama, but uh, Cyrus Conjo says he's his own man. Yeah, he does. And, you know, there have been reports, we've talked about it on the show, Gary, reports that he really might not want to uh, compete against his brother Ari for a position. We talked to him last night, Cyrus, and he said that's absolutely not true. They're two different types of players, and you know he's not worried about the competition in terms of against his brother. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But I, I think Cyrus is definitely headed to Alabama. Well, he's an outstanding prospect, but there are some that feel that uh, Callaway High School out of Jackson, Mississippi's Aaron Morris isn't far behind. I think he's the most one of the most underrated players in the South. I, I don't think there's any question about that. He's committed to Ole Miss. But uh, due to their problems up there, they had this past season. He was very impressed when he came to Alabama last summer with his mother. He came back on an official visit recently, earlier this month. Had a great time. Again, his mother joined him. So, you know, that's going to mean a lot because she's going to be a factor in the decision. But ultimately, you know, who knows what's going to happen. I think Ole Miss is still in the driver's seat. Mississippi State's in there. But Alabama's made a strong impression. All right, great stuff as always, Rodney. Let's get right to the phone calls because they are lining up for us. First off tonight, CB in Tuscaloosa. CB, welcome in. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to y'all. Same to you. And I'm sure older and gray, but look, uh, <laughs> people wonder about if they're going to be ready to play. You know, uh, we're wearing them red jerseys tradition. The coaches, they were thinking Alabama, man. I mean, you know, I, the coaches can coach them up, but it's the players, and uh, I think they'll be ready. What do y'all think? I agree with you. That You know, that it's a bowl game. It's a chance to win 10 games. It's disappointing, but I, I'll be honest with you, CB, and Rodney, you can chime in. I think those kind of losses linger with the fans more than they do with the players, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, you know, you remember a couple of years ago, obviously, when they, they lost the disappointing game to Florida. This is a totally different situation. I think, you know, this team here, they're playing to win 
10 games. That's an opportunity to add to the total that, you know, it's, it's a record setting total in the NCAA. So that's one thing. And you've got a lot of seniors. You've got some guys like Greg McElroy who wants to win that last game. So I think that means something as well. Yeah, and to keep that streak alive of 10 win seasons, there's not too many teams around the country that will have won 10 games three seasons in a row. Alabama can be one of them. Okay, Rodney, a recruiting question from Dale and Mavel. Dale, take it away. Hey, guys, uh, roll tide and happy holidays. Uh, I was just wondering about uh, Clinton Dix. I know he's talking about maybe going with D. Hart to Michigan, and I wonder what the uh, what your uh, gut feeling is on that. And also, if um, if we could, could we get some uh, video clips of uh, of the defensive tackle from Arizona too, uh, and see some of that maybe? All right, we'll work on the video clips for you on Jesse Williams, Rodney. What about Hasin Clinton Dix? <laughs> Well, Dale, I tell you, um, I, you know, I think Clinton Dix is probably going to stick to his commitment to Alabama. Again, D. Hart's the outstanding running back on that team who has been committed to Michigan. Would come to Alabama if they could take him in January. But I think Hussein Clinton Dix will follow through with his commitment. All right. Uh, let's uh, go to Foster's and talk with Demetrius. Welcome into the program, Demetrius. Go ahead. Hey, how's it going? Sir? Doing well. All right. I was trying to find out if y'all knew anything about the status of Alfred Hill returning to the team next season. Well, Demetrius, let me tell you, he's at Itawamba. He's entering Itawamba Community College over in Mississippi. His first day over there will be January the 5th. He has to stay three semesters before he's eligible to transfer back. He's an academic and uh, not academically qualified. So he's got to stay over there for three semesters. Then he can transfer back to Alabama or wherever he wants to go. But at this point, I would say he's leaning towards coming back to Alabama. All right, let's get to an email question. And this one comes from Trey in West Blockton. Based on the progression of Philip Sims, how sunny would you deem the Tide quarterback's uh, future uh, along with, uh, you know, the fact that he's got a battle with A.J. McCarron? What, well, what, what do you think? I mean, that's going to be one interesting battle. And I really personally do not believe that there will be a starter named until probably, you know, in, in the fall camp, maybe even the first week uh, of the first, or, or rather the a week of the first game. And, and it wouldn't surprise me, Gary, and we've talked about this, to see both of those guys play, maybe a two-quarterback system. I know Nick Saban doesn't generally do that, but he probably hasn't had two guys at the same time as talented as these two on one team. All right, uh, time for one more phone call before we have to take a break, and it's Gary and Fayette. Gary, welcome in. Yes, I'd like to know about Gabe, right? All right, Ronnie Game right. big uh, nose tackle out of Columbus, Georgia, Carver High School, uh, teammate of uh, Kroll's. What's, uh, what's the latest on Ryan? Well, He's kind of been all over the map. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what's the latest today? Well, that's kind of putting it mildly, Gary. He's, you know, he has been all over the map. But, you know, Tennessee's been in there. Alabama's been in there. Auburn's been in there. Now he says, all, uh, you know, at one point Auburn was his favorite. His mother loved him. Now she hates them. So, and I don't know what's going to happen with Gabe Wright. He's, he's you know, he's supposedly a Georgia fan as well. And, I'm just going to tell you, that one's going to be too difficult for me to call. I yeah. mean, I, you know, because, again, Gary, every time you talk to him, it's a different story. Yeah. One of those is just going to have to wait and see and, and uh, could wind up not making a, a decision until signing day. Who and may, maybe who's left that he can choose from. That's right. If you don't watch it, sometimes you, you play everybody, you know, along the way, and then you get left out if you don't watch it. So, But he's a good player. We'll see what happens with him. All right, more phone calls and emails right after this. Day. Welcome back to TITV. Phone lines are open right now. If you'd like to get through and ask Rodney a question, 205-348-WVUA. In the meantime, we've got an email, and uh, this one comes to us from Tony in Tuscaloosa. How solid is Brent Callaway's commitment? We mentioned him, 5A yeah. back of the year in Alabama from Russellville High School. I know Auburn has continued to recruit him uh, with yeah. uh, some, some effort. Mm -hmm. he, and he's been re uh, committed to Alabama for a long, long time. And I think it's pretty solid, Tony, but again, you know, Auburn's recruiting them hard. They've talked about the possibility of using him at running back, and it, he's, a, he's going to be a linebacker at Alabama. So, you know, we'll see what happens, but right now he's told us he's solid, but uh, looking at Auburn. Okay, I got another email from Johnny in Fayette. Who will be the next public commitment? That's the thing you well, ever Johnny, I, I wish Johnny could tell me because I, I certainly don't know. I'll tell you this Xavier Dixon's going to announce in early January. Uh, it's Alabama or Georgia. He's an outstanding defensive lineman from, or he could also play linebacker from Griffin, Georgia. You know, and, and who, who in between and betwixt, who knows? I mean, you know, they just kind of happen. You know, we, we mentioned uh, there's just a few slots left and guys can get left out in, in the cold. Um, at the same time, there's some guys that have an offer no matter, no matter what. So uh, in, in some of these prospects that are highly touted, Alabama may be waiting on to signing day or, or beyond. 
Well, could, you know, a Jadeveon Clowney, a Snoop Brazzle, certainly, or Kroll. guys, Isaiah Kroll. You know, most of them are going to do it, Gary, within a day or two, if not on signing day. You know, most of those guys, they're, they're going to wait till the end. And, and even Cyrus Quanjo, he, even if he makes a decision before signing day, he's not going to announce anything until signing day. So, and, and like we've seen, Coach Saban always seems to find a way to make the numbers work. Oh. So we'll keep up with it. Well, coming up, Roll Tide is something we say at Alabama, but is it becoming a national trend to say Roll Tide? That story when Tide Insider TV continues. And finally, tonight, Alabama football obviously is rich in history and tradition, and the creative people at ESPN were in the West Alabama area early in November to shoot a commercial with the theme, Roll Tide. We got it for you. Take a look. Roll time. Roll tide. Roll tide. Roll tide. Roll tide. Roll tide, y'all. Roll tide, Roll tide. Roll tide. Get some. Roll tide. Roll tide. It's such an honor. Roll tide. Roll tide. Yep. Y'all don't even know he was a virgin until he's 28, and now, roll tide. Hi, Mary and Daisy. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. You will always be remembered. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Man, they get a lot of pub. ESPN's been good to Alabama. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt about it. Well, Buddy's has been good to us, and we're heading over there to Northport to have dinner at Buddy's tonight. If you're out and about, stop by and join us. And don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, you can find it on our website. Uh, John Huddleston will have it up in just a bit, WVUATV.com. So, for Rodney Orr and our entire TITV crew, I'm Gary Harris. We'll see you again next week, but we won't see you until after Christmas. So, everybody out there watching us, have a very Merry Christmas. Good night.